center. Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, Oakland, California. Remove Holy Spirit from the church. No church. Re the day of the Pentecost is actually the day that the Holy Spirit started working with the church. Now, Papa said something to me. He said the book of the Acts of the Apostle was wrongly named. He said it should have been named the heart of the Holy Spirit. Because from chapter 2, Holy Spirit took over. The same Peter before the Holy Spirit, one small boy, girl said, is one of them. It's war. Me, I've never seen. I guess it was speaking some other language. So that you say, I don't understand what you're saying. Huh? But when the Holy Spirit came, he faced the council. He said, we cannot but speak what we have seen, what we have heard. Now, telling the council. So, the book of heart is the book of the Holy Spirit. So, Pentecostal is the church of the Holy Spirit. That is what makes the difference. It takes the Holy Spirit for you to see any miracle. It takes the power of God for any demon, no matter the size, to bow. It takes the Holy Spirit. I was speaking with the mom of that boy in uh, Stockton yesterday. I asked him, I said, if anybody ever talked to you about supernatural now, won't you know? He said, Pastor, I can write a book. Do you know she still came telling me, he said, Pastor, if that boy has any hope, it's you. If you don't want him, I don't want him. I don't want him in my house. I said, but he was living with you before he confessed. He said, but I didn't know. He said, now that I know, the woman saw the boy turn to cat. He chased the boy in the compound. The, the house was fenced. Now, he ran after him, got there, didn't see anything. And there was a huge fence. So, she ran out to the other side. The neighbor saw a black cat jump from the roof, from the ceiling, jump out and disappeared. Then one of the people he attacked in a dream, they saw it and printed it online, the picture. I said, this is the picture of the person. It's a wild cat. I forgot the name they call it. They attacked me. So, they showed it to the boy. The boy laughed. He said, that's me. After the boy left here, somebody said, let me pray for you. <laughs> he beat nonsense to the person that they called police to come and separate them. Now, but the same boy was here and I asked him question and he answered. If I was not here, I was in Chicago. He came out to testify because the Holy Ghost lives here. He takes the anointing of the Holy Ghost for any demons to submit to you. That was my reason why I said nobody talks to him. Because the residue of witchcraft, if you are not standing well. <laughs> I told him, now the boy is in the psychiatry facility for the past many weeks in Sacramento. Now, the police didn't understand. But I said, I'm a witch, I'm to kill. Police say he has mental problems. <laughs> So when you talk about the Pentecostals, you are talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is chief mover of the church. Anything called church must be by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no church. So when we say Pentecostal, yeah, because we know, we have now, Paul was not trained directly by Jesus. Holy Spirit trained him. Paul is greater than all the apostles. 
Yeah, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can make anything out of you. Hear me. It is Satan's strategy. Let me say the wise, the schemes, the wise, the tricks. It is Satan's trick to go into people's mouths and attack the message. You know that the Bible says so when in, in Psalms 92, verse 7, when the wicked springs up like the grass, like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. That's why I said anything not built of God can last. Let's say unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who builds it. The only prosperity you won't lose sleep over is the one from the Lord. See what the Bible says here. John chapter 14, verse 25 and 27. It said, This thing has spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Not as the world. In Luke chapter 7, verse, from verse 18. Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist sent us to, to you, saying, are you the coming one? So, the disciples were telling Jesus, or do we look for another? This is what our master said. And that very how he cured many of, infa many infirmity, of infirmities, afflictions and evil spirits, and to many, many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. Now, he now began to tell them the testimony to go tell John. He says, he says, the deaf, no, he said, the blind, they see, tell him. The lame, they walk, tell him. The lepers, they are cleansed. The deaf, they hear, tell him. The dead are raised. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Now, the solution, the only solution that a blind wants is to see. The only solution for the lame is to walk. The one for the lepers is to be cleansed. The deaf only wants to hear. The only prayer point for the dead is to be raised. Then Jesus says, the poor, what the poor needs is to hear the gospel. You know what he said? And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Because you know, those people will be offended because of that. He said, the poor, they have the gospel preach. May I say something? Eh? The gospel of Christ is the only escape. Only escape for the poor in this world. The system of this world is not built to help anybody. You know most of those that criticize the church. They are the ones that cheat their workers. They are the ones that use people without paying them. Capitalism is all about cheating people. Don't you understand? Yet it's better than communism. And in the world system, you only have two choices. Is either you are a communist or a capitalist. So even capitalist that is good, I'm going to understand some economics. <laughs> Let me tell you what capitalism is all about. I know I'm on television. Let the whole world hear it. Hear me. I have a company. I offer you 70,000 salary. Hmm? But I work you out to, to, to work for me half a million dollars. If I give you all the work you do for me, where is my gain? Hear me, all of you that you are on salary, you are worth 10 times your annual salary to that company. 
your work ten times. What you do for them, if you do for yourself, multiply your income by 20. That's what you are worth. But that is what capitalism is all about. Yes. So by the time you give me work for one million dollars, I give you hundred thousand. One million dollars, I give you hundred thousand. One million dollars, hundred thousand. One million dollars, hundred thousand. I've gained nine hundred thousand times five. I'm worth. So when they say one company is worth fifty billion, who are the one doing it? Many people can't see through prosperity. Many people cannot be released into the potentials of business ownership because they won't let the light of the gospel of Christ to enter them. Before this series is over, a business will be bathed in your heart. And when they realize you are complaining, they give you 6%. <laughs> When they realize you are complaining, <laughs> so that you don't go somewhere else, since we say it. Because if you go, they will spend money to train somebody else. The only solution to the problem of the, of the poor is in the church. So Jesus said, and the poor have the gospel of Christ preached. In the name of Jesus, everyone pregnant with business ideas, this year, you will give back to your babies. Yes. What is capitalism? That company, they pay very well. No, that company, they are smart very well. They are smart very well. They pay well. What you are doing for them, do it for yourself. You see how much you are coming, bringing home. Then, when some people want to do this, they say they are agency. Right in your face, they charge the company fifty dollar per hour. They throw eighteen dollar at you. <laughs> they say this agency pay very well. You think they are fools? <laughs> you say my recruiter is very nice. No, your recruiter is not nice. Your recruiter is very smart. He's <laughs> very smart in the world system. Thank you, Jesus. I want to believe God to point the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the areas of financial empowerment. And it will come with ideas. It will come with energy to push. It will come with the power, the drive to execute. In the name of Jesus. You are worth more than they, any one of them can pay you. So Jesus says, the poor have the gospel preached to them. He said, go and tell John, what else are they talking about? What else? Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know what the message calls, says in verse 22 of that scripture, verse 22. Then he gave his answer, go back and tell John what you have just seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The wretched of the heart have God's salvation's hospitality extended to them. So when anybody attacks the gospel of prosperity bring preach, they are stopping the hospitality of salvation from coming to you. Is it there? He said, the wretched of the heart have God's salvation. So, a message, now, an attack against any message of prosperity is to block God's salvation hospitality from coming to you. That's why I love the message of prosperity. But we have hypocrites everywhere. Hypocrite everywhere. Otherwise, how can you attack somebody and solicit the same reason that you attack that person? You solicit for help for that thing. Does it make sense? Say, well, you are going to help us because your church is very prosperous. Prosperous, going to help us. No, we are not running charity here. 
We didn't call anybody into ministry. Go back to the one that called you. And when many eyes were too much on me, I gave them a check. It's because of the hypocrite. We don't have any problem sowing seed. May I say something to you? Hmm. Papa said something to me one time. He said somebody came to him that he knows very well. And I can't mention the name. Came begging for money. Then he said to him, you know I have a lot of money, but I won't give you. The reason is so that you can be delivered from poverty. If I continue to give it to you, you continue to beg. You continue to rely on me. I have it, but I can't give you. And he said to me, he said, that man is still begging around you today. You have to let it enter into you. God is no respecter of person. Well, I was privileged to tell the pastor anyway. I said, if you were doing what we were doing, you won't have to ask us for money. If you were doing, yes, because the Bible says God is no respecter of person. God is no, we have never written a check as a church to anybody to, to ask for money. We preach the word. When you hear the word, the Bible says it is your duty. Because you know you are fed well with the word of God. It is your duty to communicate back in giving and receiving. Moreover, we've seen offerings from people we don't know. This morning, now, <laughs> about three weeks ago, I, I wore this suit in Chicago. <laughs> so, this morning, I just, I realized there was an envelope inside. Then I look at it. Then I saw it, there was a big check inside. I said, really? So, they gave me this much money in Chicago. It was given by an individual. But he now wrote a note. He said, I want to believe God. He said, in fact, Pastor, I am beating myself right now. He said, I want to believe God to hate myself so that I can serve God. <laughs> I said, I will look for this person. So don't, when the Bible says, you must say your father and your mother, because I thought of the leadership empowerment. I said, he's saying that serving God will make it look as if you hate yourself. That's what, Jesus, that, that's what it means. Now, I, this morning, I, I got a check in there. No, and is, they, if this thing has gone to the right cleaner, that's the end of the check. <laughs> Principle of the kingdom. Principle of this kingdom. There is a word for somebody this morning. Your place is not in the office reporting every day. Your place is sitting down and make God's treasure in your mind and put it to work. Your place is in the place of is in the world of business. But you lack the drive, you lack the push. I release the grace of clarity of purpose this morning. In the name of Jesus, every God's given idea will become clearer and clearer. The energy and the drive to execute, receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23, the Bible, Jesus was speaking. He said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tight of mint and harness and cumin. Now, because I've heard some people say, Titan is only in the New Testament, is the Old, Old Testament. You see, when it comes to giving, you see all kinds of theory, you see all kinds of calculations. That is when one chapter is no longer relevant. They use one chapter to neutralize that chapter. <laughs> you see all kinds of <laughs> Someone say, God help me. <laughs> say it. Okay, say, God help you, Pastor, if you can't say it to yourself. <laughs> me, I need God's help. Now, because I haven't you heard it that they say it's only in the, in the Old Testament? Somebody have actually asked me, say, where did Jesus say it? So I want to show you so that you can go tell them this morning. Now, he said, what to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and honey and common 
and have neglected the wavier matters of the law. Justice and mercy and faith. Now, let me explain that. He's saying that you pay tight, but plus tight there are some other things. Justice. I will explain it. He said, this you ought to have done. That is tightening. Mm -hmm. But without leaving the others undone. So our righteous is somebody that is lacking message of prosperity, but is defrauding everybody around. So just was calling for justice. Hear what the Bible says in another in, in other translations of the book. It says here, in the New Living Translation, it says, What sorrow awaits you, Pharisees, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your hub gardens, but you ignore justice and the love of God. You should tithe, yes. Jesus was once speaking. If you have a good Bible, it's going to be read in your Bible. Is that right? The New Living Translation says, but you ignore justice and love God, you should tithe, yes. But do not neglect the more important things. Then he was talking about treating people right. Treating workers right. Not cheating people. Not taking advantage of people. Not using people. We can't tell you how many people we have helped part of school. Because that's not for public consumption. Thank you, Jesus. He said, yes, you must tithe. But you also must do it. So if anybody tells you, where did Jesus talk about tithe? Don't forget this scripture. Write it down. Matthew 23, verse 23. I'll read it to them in the, New Living, in the New Living Translations. Now, the Living Bible says this. The Living Bible. He said, but what to you Pharisees, for though you are careful to tithe, even the smallest part of your income, they were tithing. You completely forgot about justice and the love of God. You should tithe, yes, but you should not leave these other things undone. <laughs> May I say this to you, church? Titan is the hand color for kingdom prosperity. Earlier I said in Matthew 6 from verse 29, it says, Do not lay up your, for yourself treasures on horse. Matthew 6 from 19. Where most and rust and destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up. So anything built not on God, when the devil sweep them away, is the thief that he's talking about and most here. He said, For where your treasure is, verse 21, there is your heart will be also. Where your treasure is. If you are struggling to tithe faithfully, it shows that your heart is not with God. That's what the Bible says. You can't have your heart beat with God and tithe become a struggle. That is why I told you, when we started as a church, we didn't have money to pay the rent, but we removed the tithe. So, believing God, between the time we have to pay, the title will come. We were two families when we signed up for a hotel to be paying fourteen hundred dollars a month. Two families. That time, no income. Yes, I signed the paper fourteen hundred dollars monthly for the hotel. So we started somewhere. Titan is the hand color. In the school of kingdom prosperity. We ask San Jose and uh, Stockton, uh, San Francisco now Stockton to bring their 10% here. The truth is that their 10% will ship it out 
as tight. We don't keep it in Oakland. Otherwise, they will be tightened to me. I don't want them to tie to my anointing. I want to tie to anointing that I tie to. Many years back, I will hear this word from my spiritual father, and I won't understand it. But you know, I don't have the liver not to believe a man of God. I said, God, when I, how can I see it? I pray that you will have an encounter with kingdom prosperity Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. If, you are, if people have not started saying, where are you getting money from? You have not, been started, you have not started getting blessed. Because it, nobody can explain it. When this church, when somebody sent money to me from a Thailand, I don't know anybody in Thailand in my life. There's nobody that I know that lives in Thailand. Some people sent money from Arizona, Tucson. I've been to Phoenix. I've never been to Tucson. I said, let's write an acknowledgement letter to know why are they sending money. At least somebody will call. We'll send a letter to acknowledge it. That was my reason. I put my car. In case they will call, we will talk. They sent another checks with no information. Till today, I can't tell what led to it. <laughs> he said, prove me now if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven. He said, prove me now if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven. You better prove God and allow him to do what he can do in your life. Great to know that you are there. I am Pastor Isaac of Dominion Life Christian Center in Oakland and of the Moment of Breakthrough Television Broadcast. This is to let you get acquainted with our schedules and our locations. We meet here in Oakland, 7 p.m. every Thursday for the Dominion from coast to coast service every Thursday 7 p.m. and the Dominion Celebration Service on Sundays. Every Sunday that's 11 a.m. I'll be glad to see you. Then also in San Jose, our address is 286 Bernard Avenue, 286 Bernard Avenue in San Jose, California. Our schedule in San Jose is 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and 10 a.m. on Sunday. And good news, Dominion Life is coming to Stockton. From the last Sunday of February, we're going to be in Stockton. Hallelujah, that's good news. And our address, our location in Stockton is 7170 West Lane, somewhere close to Kaiser Permanente in Stockton or Costco. That's somewhere around those two locations. 7170 West Lane in Stockton, California. So two and three. Stockton. Our schedules in Stockton are Wednesday 7 p.m. Friday 7.30 p.m. for Supernatural Warfare and also on Sundays 10 a.m. I look forward to seeing you in all these services. These services are powerfully anointed and I see God's power at work in your life. God bless you.